David Deerfeeder, the Bereavement Services Manager at Yolo Hospice in Davis, California. And welcome to my segment of Between Two Philodendrons, Self-Care for You. First of all, just so that you're not worried, I am six feet away. We always want to make sure we maintain distance during this coronavirus pandemic. Also, you should be washing your hands and singing Happy Birthday two times through while you do it. Now, you can sing Happy Birthday as it is, or on the second verse, you can sing, I am loving me now, I am loving me now, I'm loving me, I'm washing my hands, I'm loving me now, because this is about self-care. And, of course, when you're washing your hands, you have to have water. Also, you need to put some water in your mouth, preferably not with soap on it, but just drink water. Make sure you're staying hydrated right now. That's one of the ways that we practice self-care. Another way we practice self-care is to make sure that you have some good, colorful vegetables and fruits that are part of your diet. So make sure that you're doing that. If you're eating your broccoli or you're eating your spinach, I'm not going to worry about you. But if I hear that you're not eating your vegetables, I am going to find a way to make sure that you do. Because, you know, I can see you right now. Not really. Don't worry. But one of the things you might want to try for self-care is being able to play. Play is very important. And for some people, play may be a matter of, of doing puzzles, of adult coloring. Um, it can be any number of things. But we want to make sure that you are playing. These Sometimes we think, oh, I'm in quarantine and I have to just sit here and complain. But you don't. Or if you do, you could get some Play-Doh and you could shape things that you're frustrated about and then smash them down. Because if you are frustrated, something like Play-Doh can be really handy because it's very squishy and manipulative and it doesn't hurt. So, and you can also make, if you're feeling lonely, you could create a little, you know, village of Play-Doh people. Now you may think, David, you've lost your mind and that may be entirely possible. But the thing is, being creative right now is very important. Other ways to be creative can also be, for instance, I'm sitting in the Barbara Frankel Memorial Library, which is a wonderful library that we have here at Yellow Hospice. Reading can be wonderful. And you may say, but I can't get to the library. And I will say, I know. However, there are a lot of books that are online as PDFs. And there may be resources available from your local library. So, again, be creative in looking for things. This might be a good time to reread a couple of favorite books. Also, we want to stay connected. Stay connected to people and stay connected to nature. And even though my little philodendron friends are here, and they may look like set dressing, but actually just having the connection to nature is important. And that connection to nature can be maintained by taking a walk if you're in a safe place. It can also be maintained by just watching some, some nature documentaries. It can be maintained by doing some YouTube videos on gardening, seeing what's out there in Google land. Just to be sure that you're feeling connected. Part of our humanity what I see as spirituality is our connection with something outside of ourselves. So for some of us, that's nature. When I first moved to California, yes, I hugged a redwood tree. But it was a spiritual experience, and I needed to do it. And I also have my two um, crazy little chihuahua dogs. And I, I love them, but they are chihuahua dogs. So they are a little bit crazy, but they fit me perfectly. And those two little dogs bring me tremendous joy. So the interaction, whether it's with people on the phone, if you have folks that are in your household, if you just are able to wave at a neighbor, um, whatever the interaction is, maintain it. And make sure you maintain good interaction with the person in the mirror. That person in the mirror is very important. So when you look in that mirror, see that person. See them as a hero. See them as someone who's worthwhile, who deserves your love. Because that's an important part of self-care, is understanding, yes, you do deserve that level of love. 
Now, some other things you can do are virtual travel and virtual museum tours. Again, if you use Google or another search engine, you can just type in there virtual art, virtual museums, virtual travel. Uh, there are a, a lot of, of sites that can let you spend time outside of your house while remaining in your house. Journaling is also very important. Journaling is not necessarily writing out page after page after page of um, your deepest thoughts. Journaling can just be today I feel like and or today I did. It could be like a little diary entry. Um, today I wish. Today I thought about. You can have some of the basic prompts, the who, why, where, when, how, and just write something down. Or you can even write, today I don't feel like journaling. I think David is crazy. And that'll be fine too. However, if you do have things that are on your mind, I'm going to share with you a technique that I learned from uh, Dr. Shirley Fleming. And I'm just getting my props out. Bear with me. Okay. Dr. Shirley believed that, or at least her theory was based on an idea that sometimes when we have anxiety or we have these repeated thoughts, they come up because the brain feels like they're important and we need to remember them. So it keeps bringing them up. Now this is the same way that if you were running an errand to the store, Back in the days before the coronavirus, you might be going, I need bread, I need milk, I need buns, I need bread, I need milk, I need buns, and you would repeat it because it's important. However, some of the things that fill our brains are not that important. Or we have other things we'd rather think about. They may be very important indeed, but like, uh, when will I get to spend time with my grandchildren again? That's an important thought, but it doesn't have an answer right now if you don't live with your grandchildren. I don't live with my grandchildren. At least I get to FaceTime them, which is wonderful because it's a way to stay connected. So do stay connected. But if I had that concern, when will I get to see my grandchildren again? And it kept me awake at night, I would write it down on a post-it note. And so I put, well, when will I see my grandchildren again? I take that post-it note and I put it in a Ziploc bag. And this Ziploc bag holds the questions that I don't have answers to right now. When I seal that bag, I put it in some place that's very, very secure, some place that I know it's safe, other people are not going to find it, it's just my space. This bag is, depending on your outlook, it could be your universe bag, or your future bag, or your God bag. That either the universe, the future, or God will be able to bring you this answer eventually. But for today, you don't have the answer. So you put these things in the bag. One post-it note per item. If you have to, you can put a couple post-it notes, a couple of things on one post-it note. But otherwise, one post-it note per item. This may get full. You may have to use a bigger bag. Do whatever it takes. Now, when that thought comes back, because it will, you can speak to that thought. And you can say, listen, I put you in the bag. You are important. I am not going to forget you, but I am going to think of something more interesting. And then think of something more interesting. Think of just lying on the beach. Think of being in the woods. Think of looking out at the ocean. Think of just whatever it is that's pleasurable for you. And think on these things, knowing that the things that are going to go around in your head are in the bag. Now, the beauty of this technique is that if you have a particularly bad day, when the sky is gloomy and you just want to ruminate about all the unanswered questions in your life, you can dump the bag out on the floor, you can roll around in it, and all of those post-it notes will stick to you until you're ready to take them out. Because we're not saying you throw these things away. We're just saying you don't have to have them at the forefront of your thoughts. This is a powerful way to be able to do some, what I call microwave journaling, just to get the things off your mind. Now, one of the other things I have here is this very important pill. It 
it is obnoxious, isn't it? It will stop. Don't worry. I See, I told you. I promise I won't press it again. Laughter is very important. Laughter dumps endorphins into your system. So you do not have to have something funny in order to laugh. And what you can do is, again, go to your search engine and enter laughter yoga. And you'll find these sessions where people are deliberately laughing and acting out some silly things. Like there's a laughter mouse that goes like this. <laughs> And a laughter lion. <laughs> and there are all manner of things that people do during a laughter yoga session. So I advise you go to uh, that laughter yoga search and pull up some of these sessions. Laughter is a good thing. Laughter doesn't require humor, doesn't require something funny, but it does require your permission to experience joy. So if you have been telling yourself you're not allowed to experience joy right now, maybe it's a good time to say, okay, I'm allowed to experience it. Doesn't mean you're going to find it right away, but give yourself permission. In the house, in your chair, in the bed, wherever you are, whatever exercise you can do is important. If you've been worrying You've been storing up all kinds of adrenaline and hormones that get you ready for a fight you're never going to have. So having a chance to walk around, to move around, helps metabolize those hormones. Another thing that helps is breathing. And breathing is breathing in through your nose and breathing out through your mouth slowly. So a candle flame may waver, but it would not be blown out. So, I mean, you do four, four counts coming in, hold it for a few seconds, and then eight counts coming out. So it'd be one, two, three, four. You hold it, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's just. Breathing helps restore us, it helps to ground us. If you find yourself being very anxious, you can do what those two crazy chihuahuas of mine do. You can shake. And I don't mean like, hey, how you doing? Because we're not supposed to shake right now. We're supposed to go like this or like this or like this or like that, but not actually touching elbows, remember. But the way my chihuahuas shake is they come in, they're all excited. They've been outside barking. They walk in the house and they go. <laughs> it's amazing how wonderful that feels. So I'm going to encourage you to try it with me. Nobody's around. Nah, we're good. Just you and me. Here we go. On the count of three. We're going to shake, and then we're going to take a nice, sighing, deep breath. One, two, three. <laughs> Doesn't that feel better? So just remember, these days are just circumstances that we're all sharing. And there are ways that you can make the best of this day. Decide to make the best of it. And know that we're here to support you. Please don't hesitate to contact us here at Yolo Hospice. If there's any way that we can be a support to you. We do provide bereavement support. And support about anticipatory loss. When people are concerned about the way that they're being impacted by a significant illness. Whether they have it or someone else has it. So just contact us. We'll be happy to work with you to provide you support. And in the meantime, hang out with your philodendrons, drink your water, play, get some exercise, breathe, and just appreciate yourself because we appreciate you. Thank you.